Visit our fabulous sponsor, Ka Gold Jewelry, link in the description below. Hello, fabulous friends, fans, and superstars. Welcome to your horoscope for the week of March 31st, 2019. I am your astrologer, Nadia Shaw. Thank you for being here. What an amazing week it is. We don't have an active sky this week, but what we have is a important one and it is one that is powerful the emphasis on the power we are of course going to have a new moon late in the week but in many ways we are going to feel the power of that aries moon even sooner and that is because right out of the gate as we start this week mars will change signs moving into air sign gemini mars is very much about power and empowerment it is about action and action that arises from a place of self-knowledge and wholeness and containment can be the most strategically powerful steps that we can take to empower ourselves and empower our lives. There is with any given planet a spectrum of ways in which it can reveal itself. There is uh, what is considered the lower vibration and there is the higher vibration. And so the lower vibration of Mars is to be competitive, to be competitive for its own sake. The higher understanding of Mars is to be strategic and to know thyself and to be at peace with thyself. And from there, your actions become that much more influential and that much more consequential at that. And the power of mind and the power of words is very much coming into focus now and in the coming seven weeks ahead as Mars slowly but surely moves through the sign of Gemini. And so we should notice on a collective level a few topics that come into consideration because wherever it is that Mars goes, it's like that becomes an area where there seems to be a little bit more urgency. It seems like we are wanting to pour more of our own energy or needing to pour more energy, more attention, uh, more time because time is a great resource as well. And where it is that in some way we need to get clear about what is worth fighting for and what the sacred fight is in that particular area. And so Gemini as a sign rules things like the media. It rules early education, uh, learning new skills as well is covered here. It rules uh, our hands as well and our arms and our shoulders. And so there tends to be a greater expression that starts coming forward when Mars moves into this part of the sky. You'll notice a lot more people being more animated as they speak. And speaking of speaking, communication of all kind is covered by the sign of Gemini whether that's in writing, whether it's in person. And I like to think of this energy as spontaneous and one that allows synchronicity to find us that much easier. So it is in these very areas we're going to notice a lot more people getting a lot more passionate. And we're also going to find perhaps ourselves uh, particularly provoked as developments take place in these areas. Now the media connection to me is especially interesting this week because what we will have as we navigate further into the week is the third and last exact conjunction of Mercury and Neptune. These two planets have been dancing with each other since the middle of February. It has been since then that we've been in a Mercury retrograde season. Mid-February was when Mercury went into shadow hand in hand with Neptune in the sky. It was in March early this month that Mercury went retro and last week that Mercury came up to Neptune, stood still in the sky with Neptune and now technically has begun moving forward but still mighty close to Neptune. So that Neptunian energy that is overseeing Mercury uh, has been dominant throughout last week and into this week as well. So it's sort of just hanging there and it is a strong energy, but it's one that we don't realize is strong. Uh, we don't realize where it is that 
the messages we're getting or the thoughts that we're thinking or the way that we're perceiving things may not necessarily be rooted in uh, tangible or practical uh, understandings or facts. And what I see when I look at this, uh, a lot of this is saying to me that there may be information that is in some way being hidden. Now, of course, this can take place in our own individual journeys. I'm always more interested in that above and beyond anything else. But collectively as well, there can be this element of mystery there and things being hidden, which is kind of how Neptune likes to do things. So now you add this energy coming in of Mars moving into Gemini. And Gemini, as an energy, has to do with the things it is that we are talking about, the things it is that uh, we have on our minds. And you can see how there is, on the one hand, uh, a passionate desire to communicate and to learn and to know, but at the same time, the information and what is being presented may have a lot of mystery around it, might have a lot of cloudiness on it. And so these are gonna be energies that we are going to need to navigate. As we move further into the month, and of course I'll be here to talk about it every step of the way, but mid-month, uh, Mercury will change signs. And once Mercury changes signs, we'll move into the sign of Aries. And that will be when they, Mercury and Mars are gonna have this natural connection that astrologers call a mutual reception. And what that means is that it is going to be Mars who is in the home sign of Mercury and Mercury in the home sign of Mars. So they have a way of aligning, of connecting energies and just uh, blending information that much easier. And so it is gonna be at that time, once we get there, that it's gonna feel as if the information we're being presented with, the ways in which we're communicating, are gonna be a lot more direct and a lot more apparent as well and transparent for that matter. If the sign of Aries and the energy of Mars is anything, it is direct, it is in its truth. It's not hiding anything. Uh, it is an energy that is unabashed and unfiltered as well. So once we get to that moment, I think that's when we're gonna start to see what it was actually that had been hidden from us in some way over the course of this Mercury retrograde season. Now, of course, there are ways that this can play out on a collective level, but I would invite you to go deeper and look at it in terms of your own journey and your own path. Is there a space or a place where you found yourself kind of going back and forth or not really being sure or thinking you had the information and now it's starting to be revealed that maybe not so much, or maybe you just want something different. The way that you are looking at thinking about a certain matter is under a process of evolution. Well, that sense of evolution and an evolving matter is only gonna accelerate and that burst of clarity really is gonna come through once we get you into just a further into this month in the middle of April, once Mercury changes signs. With Mars moving into the sign of Gemini this week, as I said, this has to do with early education. It has to do with things like workshops and book signings and uh, skill buildings. So we can notice more people feeling very passionate about these very things. And it is a topic that is coming much more to the forefront and much more to the surface. Um, where is it that you are genuinely curious and are willing uh, to go after what it is that you want to learn and how are you gonna go about doing that? How is it that you will facilitate greater learning of new skills, uh, of practical understandings uh, in yourself and in others as well? Some of us may actually be surprised at a fierce curiosity that arises within us now and the determination to see it through so that it counts for something. If Mars likes anything, it likes a goal. It likes to be focused. Uh, it likes to know what it wants and then go after it with absolute bravery and courage. And speaking of that, in one way or another and in one area of life or another, we may be asked to have a difficult conversation a conversation and the opportunity may come up very spontaneously or synchronistically that does require courage on our part. And there are different layers of courage, right? There's the courage of the, the physical safety and confronting that. 
There is the courage of our own vulnerability and being willing to protect ourselves, but also know that we will be okay regardless of what happens, regardless of what we feel ready to share. And there is also the courage of being willing to look at our own truth and own our own part in whatever it is that has felt uncomfortable, wherever it is that we need to clear the air or talk something through. To be able to take ownership for our own part, that is the true act of bravery. And it is now and in the weeks ahead that we will be asked to contemplate, to consider, and to articulate genuine forms of courage and not instead get into a back and forth into like, as they say, a war of words. I'll give you an example. Something came to mind when I looked at this energy. I remember many, many years ago, I was in school and I remember when I started graduate school, I had a plan for my life. I had lots of plans at different times. My plans have changed very much <laughs> here and there. But I remember there was a time when I really thought that I could be a professor, that I could teach, uh, teach at a university. And I uh, knew that I had to go to graduate school, that I'd have to get a PhD to do that. And when I went to graduate school, well, let me tell you, uh, that was a real eye-opener and it was such an experience for me and it never is about what you think, right? You think that it's about getting the degree. It's not really about that. It's about who you become in the process. And I encountered something that immediately afterwards, once I was done that year of my uh, MA program, I remember I, I needed a breather and I needed to understand it and I talked to a lot of people about it. and what it is that a lot of people do encounter once they get to that level of education is what can be called intellectual insecurity. And uh, what you find is that there are people who are interested in arguing an idea because it makes them feel powerful, it, it makes them uh, feel like they are better than if they're able to in some way use words, make it about a concept, make it about a thought, but that's not what's really going on. It's about being combative, it's about ego, um, and it's about finding ways in which to not be respectful while appearing on the surface to be respectful. And when I saw that intellectual insecurity, as I saw it come up again and again, that was a part of what made me say, okay, this environment may not be the environment for me. And it was what it needed to be. There are people who love it. There are people who thrive in it. There are people who love the challenge and it really can feel like a sporting event. Uh, I remember again, when I was a student, my favorite thing to do was take tests in, uh, in the learning environment because I saw them as an, uh, a sporting event where I prepared, I did what I was gonna do before, and then there was the moment and I just gave it what I had and then I left it there and it was done and it was over. And that's how I like to approach my test taking. So as I was contemplating Mars moving through the sign of Gemini, these were some of the thoughts that were coming up for me. These were some of the reminders that were coming up for me um, and inviting us to consider where it is that we may be exercising some of our own insecurities and uh, allowing our combativeness to come out through our words and the way that we're using our intellect and our arguments. There are ways to share ideas that are contradictory, in fact, dramatically contradictory, um, but still be open and curious and respectful. There are ways in which to share ideas that build on each other, even when they are dramatically different ideas. And I know that it can be hard to find that middle ground, but maybe it's not about finding middle ground. Maybe it's just about the sincere desire to share information and be open to that process of sharing as if we were equals, as if, which I actually believe in many ways that we are, but as if what it was that you believed had as much validity as what someone else believes. Now, I again, I know that this can be something that provokes people uh, that challenges people, that feels like it pushes buttons. I completely understand that and that it can feel as if certain thoughts, certain ideas, certain concepts have either greater validity or greater uh, morality or rooted in greater ethics. Absolutely, that uh, can be something that we take into consideration. 
but that is more a matter for Jupiter in Sagittarius, which I'll talk about in a moment. Um, where it comes to the Gemini energy, especially Mars and Gemini, it is the expression in and of itself that can be powerful. And it is in approaching it with combativeness that people become even more combative and it just raises the energy more and more. And where this is true and where this is the case, it will show itself in some very dramatic examples for us collectively now and in the weeks ahead. So I mentioned already, we have this Mars uh, changing signs at the very beginning of the week, right around Thursday, depending on where you are on the planet, you wanna give or take a day on either side, of course, with any of the days that I give you. We have that final exact conjunction between Mercury and Neptune, and then we fast forward, and it is going to be on Friday that we have this month's new moon. And this new moon is going to be taking place in the sign of Aries. So again, this Aries energy showing up, Mars is the ruling planet of Aries. So there is this natural connection and extension of energy that is taking place. However, this particular um, new moon happening in the sign of Aries will be speaking in supreme harmony with Jupiter, what astrologers call a trine. So this is the passion meeting the philosophical. This is that sense of determination meeting a sense of ethics and morality and an exploration on that front. And this is that sense of being truly passionate for higher ideals. These two planets will be speaking with the new moon with connections that are called squares. And uh, they are characterized as of tension and also motivation as well. Now, both Pluto and Saturn are moving through the sign that has to do with a few different things. It is the sign of Capricorn. It has to do with tradition. It has to do with social structures, big power, big companies, uh, what it is that holds everything together, whether it's uh, ideas, uh, whether it is actual uh, structures and organizations, it has to do with a sense of what has been established and the hierarchy that is in place. And so you can put this together, right? It is very straightforward if you look at this, especially if you're astrologically inclined, you have a new moon that is saying, get in touch with your uh, childlike passion. What is it that you really feel? Know your truth. And if you feel it and it is true for you, then that is enough. And it's speaking with Jupiter in supreme harmony. So there's this sense of making that self that much bigger, your own desire, your own truth, that much more magnified, but also a sense of considering and contemplating what morality and what ethics actually are and elevating truth to be rooted in an appreciation of the individual. And then you have this contrast, somehow, some way, this energy of the individual needs to find a way to get along with, to work with, to navigate what can feel like the hierarchies, that what can feel like a big power. And it can feel as if in at least one area of life, there is something that we really wanna do, that we're really passionate about, that we're looking forward to, that we're excited about, and we feel called to do. There's an elevated sense here of being right in what it is that we feel and what our truth may be and the ways in which things have been established, the ways in which things have been done. We are right now operating under the conjunction of Pluto and the South Node and Saturn and the South Node. This is gonna be a dominant energy throughout this year. And as part of this, what we are already seeing is that a lot of big companies are finding themselves reaching a point of karmic closures. That is what the South Node represents. And so you have this sense of what has always been there, the companies that have always been around, that have held things together, the way that we have understood what power is, uh, the comfort that we have found in those structures. And now we have this need, whether we like it or not, to find our own power within that, to not necessarily rely on the structures, but more importantly, to rely on ourselves, 
uh, our own creative impulses, our own vision, and our faith as well. To have hope while we know that there may be some contradictory information uh, coming from other spaces like these established uh, traditional, uh, whether it's companies, whether it's again social structures, even within our families as well, as the hierarchy within families can show in this sign of Capricorn as well. On a more personal level, it can feel as if what it is you want to do and you feel inspired to do, you don't necessarily have the support or you need to convince uh, people who are elders, perhaps parents or uh, other grown-ups in your life uh, that you have to either get them on board or convince them. But this energy absolutely could play out within you as well where it is that there is something that you feel really uh, called to do that fills you with enthusiasm and happiness and excitement, but can you make it work in a practical sense? Uh, where is it that you are gonna move yourself in that direction in tangible ways? And where is it that your satisfaction is enough? I'm reminded as I look at this as well, um, we had uh, for years between 2012 and 2015, we had this ongoing square between Uranus and Pluto, sort of a generation defining energy uh, that was playing out. And what we saw happen during that time, dramatically what we saw, I think one of the main takeaways of that, even though we as astrologers are still exploring it and contemplating it and learning from it, what I saw was uh, the challenge to and the dissolving of gatekeepers. We are at the very beginning of that journey, actually. We're now gonna take that journey to an even deeper level with Uranus changing signs. But it is stuff like YouTube, spaces like YouTube, that demonstrate this very powerfully. Because there was a time when if you wanted to be on a screen, uh, you had to go through a television station and executives and, uh, and movie theaters and stations and executives, right? Um, I don't know how that whole structure works, so I'm just uh, throwing it out there. But you had to go through an established chain of command. If you wanted to publish a book, right? You had to find an agent, or you had to figure out a publisher who was gonna be willing to publish your book. Uh, it was a huge investment and a really big deal to publish a book yourself, to start your own publishing house. But now, of course, things are dramatically different. Um, if you have something to say, put yourself in front of a camera and put yourself online and literally it is the world that is able to see what it is that you have to say, however it is that you choose to say it, whatever it is that you desire to express, you can find a way to express it. You can find avenues to express it, but more than that, to carve your own way, to make your own road, to actually establish yourself in terms of a professional life in alignment with some expression of you, some expression of your truth. And so this idea of gatekeepers and what they are and what we are okay with and what we're not okay with has gone through a dramatic shift in just the last few years, just over the course of this decade alone, and this decade isn't even over. And so in some way, this resistance, this uh, sort of challenge, if you will, between the individual and the gatekeepers, uh, between where it is that there is a, a drive or a desire to have more regulations in place, and where it is that your own sense of what you feel you need to do and what you feel called to do and expressing it and finding ways to do that is more than enough. These can sometimes be at contrast and we may see some of this contrast under the light of this new moon. What I love about this week for us is that it is one where it's about awakening our minds and at the same time knowing that a part of awakening is to be open to the energies, to be open to the mysteries. Mars moving into Gemini, very much, it's like lights could come on right about now. Uh, ideas can feel like they've come together. What before was complex has a way of being understood very quickly. However, of course, we have Neptune conjunct Mercury. And that energy is about imagination, 
fully. It is about being immersed in uh, visions and fantasy and ideals. Now, where is it that we can bring them together? And where is it that we can allow bringing these things together? The understanding on a mind level and the inspiration on a level of spirit and imagination. Where is it that we can bring it together so that we can truly be ourselves and honor ourselves for its own sake? in the world today. This is going to be part of the great balance this week and part of the great wisdom this week as well. But the great thing is, is that there are energies that are very supportive in this regard. As I spoke of in the 2019 video that you can see on my YouTube channel, looking at the year ahead, the special horoscope, I talked about how these are changing times. These are times that are going to have us evaluating and reconfiguring power in notable ways. Now, where is it that you fall within that understanding of power? And where is it that you can claim your personal power for yourself? Because that is where authentic power lies. It is in knowing thyself and living true to that inner voice within. Well, thank you so much for watching. What do you love about this week? What are you excited about for this week? How was last week your Mercury Direct and all the other things I spoke about? Let me know all of this in the comments below. I absolutely love reading you guys. It is so much fun. Of course, if you want to know how all this wonderful stuff this week speaks to you and your sign, log on to NadiaShaw.com. Sign up to be one of my superstars. Superstars get expanded exclusive video scopes every week, unlimited access to special horoscopes and more. All of this in the superstar space. I look forward to meeting you there. I have events coming up, live events coming up that I'm really very excited about. I will be speaking on the Thursday, May the 9th, and then the Saturday immediately after, which I think is uh, the 10th. No, which is the 11th. Um, I will be doing a workshop. So there's an evening talk and a workshop in Vancouver. I will be hosted by the Fraser Valley Astrology Guild uh, in Vancouver. It's always so much fun. It's going to be the third time, I think, that I'm speaking with them. I think so. Maybe the second. I can't remember, maybe the third actually. Um, but yes, I've spoken with them before. It's always an incredible group. I've attended the group as well, uh, and we've had a lot of fun just hanging out, but I will be teaching. So one class will be on, I believe it's the evening class, looking at luck and fortune in the astrology chart. And then the workshop that is gonna take place, a half day workshop, we'll be looking at life purpose in the astrology chart. Now, both of these classes are available at synchronicityuniversity.com. I have taught them online as well. But of course, there's always a different energy. We go to different places when it is live and we're all communicating together. And so I would invite you uh, to join us if you're anywhere near Vancouver. Now, Memorial Day weekend, I will be in Seattle at the NORWAC conference. Uh, the NORWAC conference has limited uh, spaces. And so I think the limit of the number of tickets that they sell is 400. Uh, I got an email yesterday saying there are less than 30 spots left. And so if it is that you would like to attend the NORWAC conference, I would invite you to go onto their website, norwac.net, uh, and sign up to make that happen because spaces are very limited, um, but we're gonna have a lot of fun and whoever is there, I'm sure it will be perfect. And I'm really looking forward to connecting with friends and fans in Seattle as well. Now, of course, I will also be in uh, Baltimore over Labor Day weekend with the NCGR conference. And I will be participating with a whole bunch of incredible astrologers uh, on a cruise event that is taking place uh, for six days on uh, February 12th of 2020, which is called Love, Joy, and Hope. And it is very much about bringing you out of your comfort zone and putting you in a new environment where uh, we are able to truly grow and learn and move towards greater love, hope, and transformation together. I will be on this journey with you guys as well. And so this is going to be a very special experience. I have seen how incredible it is 
uh, when people do come together for experiences like this. And so I'd invite you to learn more about it and to consider it because it really is, and we're really hoping for, we're doing all this uh, to create a once in a lifetime experience in this regard. I am not the boss of this, okay? Lots of other astrologers are doing this as well. Uh, there is someone who's arranging roommates if it is that you'd like to share a cabin so that you can get a lower rate. Um, there is a fee that you pay in order to access the classes that are gonna be on board uh, and the group events that we will be doing on the ship but the actual cabin itself is being taken care of by a travel agency uh, and they're covering all of that. The price has recently gone up. The internal rooms that were at the cheaper rate of 773 per person per double occupancy are now sold out. I think now it's like 908 uh, per, per person based on a double occupancy, the current rate as well. And so basically the earlier you sign up, uh, the cheaper it is is how it works because rooms get sold out. So if it is that this is something that feels a part of your karmic journey or even if you're just interested in it, uh, check out the events page on my website, nadiashaw.com slash events for a lot more information there. And I do hope to meet you and I know that whoever it is that comes and the energy that we create together, it will be this a perfectly karmic moment to facilitate a change in us all with this cruise happening under the exact Saturn Pluto conjunction. I look forward to meeting you there. I have been presenting these videos as premieres and doing chats with you guys and talking to you guys as these videos have been presented live in real time in terms of their premiere, which is something that YouTube is uh, sort of set up to be able to do now. And I've been having a lot of fun chatting with you guys uh, and being online with you as you are watching this video with others as a watch party for the first time. And thank you. Thank you for your love. Thank you to those people who are able to join live. I'd like to say that I would like to premiere at different times so people in different time zones can watch along. Uh, but the truth is that my schedule can kind of be all over the place. And so I will try, but for now, it seems that the times that the premieres are happening, uh, it's basically like a lot of Europeans. And so thank you to my European friends and fans, but regardless of when it is you're watching this, when it is you're online or where it is that you are, I thank you for this moment with you. Thank you. Thank you so much again for this moment with you. I'm really excited about April. There's lots of incredible things to look forward to. Lots of things I'm working on too that I'm looking forward to announcing uh, with you all. And uh, just thank you for your trust and for this moment with you. It means so much to me. And of course, once again, if you wanna know how all the wonderful stuff this week speaks to you and your sign, you can log on to nadiashaw.com and sign up for the Superstar Horoscopes. I hope you absolutely love them. Thank you again for watching. It'll be a great week. Enjoy.